Hello and welcome to yet another video from The Comprehensive Dentist. My name is Dr. B and in this video, we are continuing our discussion of what makes a quality image. In previous videos, we talked about proper exposure and sharp focus. If you haven't watched those videos, I will put a link to them in the description down below. In this video, we will discuss the last and final factor that makes for a quality image and that is correct composition. Simply put, composition is capturing what you want to see and not capturing what you do not want in the photo. You are composing the image to be correctly oriented. If you get composition correct while taking the photo, it eliminates the need for a lot of post cropping when you edit the photo. The nice thing about dental photography is, is that you don't have to nail the composition when you take a photograph. You can crop the image later. And truthfully, I frequently crop my pictures after I take the photo. In my personal experience, you can take perfect pictures of your patient with minimal editing, but it will take a lot of time and it won't be the most straightforward task. Have you ever had photos taken? Your mouth is dry, you have your cheeks stretched way out, you have these big mirrors shoved in your mouth. There's only so much of that someone wants to endure for a perfect photo. Nowadays, I typically shoot a picture to allow me to edit or crop the image to make it perfect. Every photo we take of our patients should be taken in a specific way if we want the images to look nice and give us useful information. We will go over changing composition when cropping in future videos. Related to the composition is magnification ratios. This is a technical term representing ratios based on size comparisons between real life subjects and how they are captured in a photograph. We can adjust our lens to various magnification ratios by looking at the side of the lens and setting it accordingly to what we prefer. Magnification ratios work like this. Let's say we have a subject that is one inch long in real life. If we set the magnification ratio on the lens to a one to one ratio, the inch object will be one inch on the photograph. If we shoot an object at a one to four ratio, the object will be four times smaller on the picture than in real life. Again, we can adjust magnification ratios by rotating the lens focus. Look at the side of the lens where the magnification ratio display is located. On a macro lens, you will see a one on the side and as you rotate the focus, you will see yellow numbers that represent the second part of the ratio. Here is a one to one, this is a one to two, and so on. If you use a magnification ratio to take a photograph, you set the magnification ratio on the lens and you do not adjust the focus again. If you adjust focus, it will change your magnification ratio. Instead, to focus, you move closer to or farther away from your subject until the subject is in focus. For various shots in dental photography, there are recommended magnification ratios. If you use magnification ratios, all of your images will be consistent in size and amount of subject being displayed in the final photograph. Using magnification ratios are optional but can be helpful. Sometimes I will use them and sometimes I do not. Even if I use magnification ratios, I still end up cropping my photos when I edit regardless. Therefore, I don't always use magnification ratios. All right. In three separate videos, we have looked at three primary factors that have contribute to quality images, and they are proper exposure, sharp focus, and correct composition. We have discussed how aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance affect the exposure. We've talked about how the depth of field and camera stabilization affect the focus. In this video, we looked at how correct composition results in a correctly oriented photo and contributes to the image's overall quality. Now that you understand these different camera settings and understand basic photography, you're now ready to start setting up your camera and taking photos. And don't worry, if you are still a little confused about aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, I was too at one time and I had to review it multiple times myself. But I promise you that if you commit to learning these photography basics, you will be able to troubleshoot and critique your photos to become a great dental photographer. 
And you can use this same information to take pictures of other things as well. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button and subscribe if you have not already. In the next video, we are going to look at camera settings for dental photography. Specifically, I will be using a Canon camera, but you can easily apply this information to a Nikon as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.